بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. First of all, it's a great honor to be here with you, Tariq, and to be with Dr. Matson and Imam Zaid and Ustadh Dalia Mujahid, and all of you wonder pe- wonderful people around the world who are viewing this. Uh, the Prophet tells us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that on the first night of Ramadan, which here in Chicago may well be tomorrow, the moon should be very visible tomorrow, that God shackles down all of the satanic demons and all of the rebellious jinn, and he locks shut all the gates of the fire, and at the same time he opens up all the doors of paradise. So Ramadan is a very special time of the year, as we all know, and we feel different when the month comes in. As Dr. Matson said very beautifully, Ramadan also always comes at just the right time, at the perfect time. And just as we get ourselves ready to fast, and perhaps we clean up our houses and decorate our houses and put out some lights because of this great uh, occasion and this great festivity, so also the gardens of paradise, they decorate themselves for Ramadan. And this is to welcome you, because every night during this beautiful fast, there are people who are emancipated from the fire, those of us who have deserved worse, but we're given better, and the doors of heaven are open for all of us. So God enable us to go into this month with the greatest of hope, and the greatest of celebration and joy, and to have great strength in that. And as Sidi Tariq mentioned in the very beginning, don't count the days, but make every day count. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have once said to his wonderful wife Aisha, keep knocking on heaven's door. And she asked him, how? And he said, by hunger, that is by fasting, by hunger and thirst. So when we are feeling those pains of hunger and we're feeling that thirst, you know, know that this is the sound of your knocking on heaven's door, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Good character begins with hunger. Good character begins with thirst. Good character begins with the stomach. We have to control our appetites in order to be the best human beings that we can be. And it is narrated also from the Prophet ﷺ that he said, everything has a door. That is, everything has a portal that is proper for you to enter it from, instead of coming through the window or the back door or something else. Everything has a door, and the door of worship is fasting. So this is a very special type of worship. And Imam Zaid emphasized that in what he said, that the reward of fasting has no analog. It cannot be spoken of in numerical terms. You can't say you're given 10 times the reward or 70 times the reward or 700 times. But fasting has this special relationship with God. And in many authentic hadith, uh, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that God says, um, li wa ana ajzi bih. The fasting is mine. I own this. This is mine. In other words, it's not yours. And as Imam Zaid so beautifully pointed out, even when our other deeds will be taken from us as atonement for the wrongs that we've done and given to others, that according to great scholars like Sufyan ibn Uyayna, that will not happen in the case of the fast, because that belongs to God, and he will keep it for you, and he will give it back to you, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. And one of the beautiful things that we read about in the traditions about fasting is when the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in an authentic transmission, لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانْ يَفْرَحُهُمَا He says that, The faster has two joys that he delights in, that he or she delights in. When he breaks his fast, he delights in joy. 
And when he or she meets their Lord, then he delights in the joy of his fast. And one of the indications of this beautiful hadith, as our scholars have pointed out, is that in fasting, God has actually given us the promise of a good end, of a good death, the death of a believer who doesn't lose his or her faith. And he has also given us the tidings that we will meet with him in paradise. So the reward of fasting is beyond anything that we can imagine. And we ask God to enable us to enter into this fast in the best of spirit and to understand how great this act of worship is. The verb fasting in Arabic, saum, which by the way is shared in all the prophetic languages of the Semitic peoples, they all use this word saum or saum or soma in Syriac. And it means imsak, it means to stop doing something. It means also for something to stop. So we use fasting in ancient Arabic for the water to stop flowing or for the wind to stop blowing. But another meaning of this verb in its ancient um, context in the Arabic language is that salm means also exaltation. It means irtifa, to be high. We said the Arabs would say salm and nahar. And they don't mean that the day fasted, they mean that the sun reached the zenith and it is at that highest point in the sky. It doesn't go any higher than that. And then also when the sun is in that position, it's as if it were not moving. For a few hours, it's as if it's standing still in the middle of the sky, especially in the sunny deserts of countries like Arabia, places like Arabia. And so also the scholars have pointed out that this verb is perfect for fasting because of the fact that fasting is so elevated. It is the type of worship that brings all other types of worship to life. As our sister Ustada Dalia said, you know, fasting removes from you the veils over your heart, just like going out into the desert removes that light pollution so that you can actually see the stars that were always there. And as she said, it also increases you know, our spiritual sensitivity. So fasting is highly exalted. This is the act of worship that is unique among all other acts of worship. This is the one that brings our hearts to life. And of course, because we're also fasting in this incredible month where God facilitates the fast and he chains down the demonic beings and he closes the doors of hell and he opens the doors of paradise that has ornamented itself for us to receive us. So also, um, you know, this fasting renews all of our other types of worship. It is said that fasting is actually not an amal. It's not an act. It's not a deed. And that's because of the fact that Arabs understand by the nominal amal, act or deed, things that we perform. Uh, for example, we stand in prayer, we bow in prayer, we make prostration in prayer, we give money that can be counted, we go to pilgrimage and don uh, the pilgrim's garb and so forth. But in fasting, the deed is not doing a deed. The deed is not eating, not drinking, not partaking of those other, ahab, those other habits or appetites which are permissible at other times, but they're not during the day. And um, therefore, also, we want to fill Ramadan with other acts. And as Imam Zaid said so beautifully, you are given immense rewards for everything that you do in Ramadan. If you do a single voluntary good deed in Ramadan, it's as if you did an obligation, a religious obligation in some other month. And the rewards of obligations are much greater than the rewards that come to us, uh, that the, than the rewards that come to us from uh, voluntary acts. And when we do a farida in Ramadan, an obligatory act of worship, then it's as if we did 70. So this is also the month of activity. Your fasting is by not doing 
certain things, not eating and drinking and so forth. But you want to fill the month with good deeds. And we all find that it's much easier to do that in Ramadan than it is at any other time of the year. So God, give us the great joy of this month. God, enable us to, to set out on this month with earnestness, with sound intentions, that we're going to do tawbah, we're going to turn back to God, we're going to renew our covenant with the Qur'an, we're going to pray our prayers better. And again, by the very act of fasting, then you should be awake in your prayer. You should be able to be present in your prayer. So God bless us with this month. Muslims all over the world are in celebration that in just a matter of hours we will begin this great event and we must ornament ourselves and ornament our hearts just as the gardens of paradise are also ornamenting themselves and pray for this ummah, pray for the believers. One of the greatest things of all in Ramadan is the worship of supplication. The, God says, in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord has said, call upon me, supplicate me, and I will respond to you. And so therefore, when you supplicate, you've got to have absolute certainty that your supplication will be answered. And especially in this month, pray for Syria. Pray for the refugees of Syria, the broken homes, the broken families. Pray for the Muslims of Iraq. Pray for the Muslims of Libya, of Egypt. Pray for Somalia. Pray for the Yemen. Pray for the Rohingya, our beloved brothers and sisters in Burma who are facing genocide. Pray for yourself. Pray for the family. Pray for our countries. Pray for the world. And remember that your prayer will be answered. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, al-ibadah. Supplication, it is what worship is all about. It's the real essence of worship. And he said, Afdal al-ibadati hu dua that the most excellent type of worship is dua. And then in the famous hadith, al ibadah, that supplication is the marrow of worship. It is the essence of worship. So make this a month of giving of yourself. Sakha'un nafs, overflowing generation, uh, generosity from yourself and of getting our hearts sound. Islam is laws and rules, and we cannot have guidance, we cannot have ethics and morality without law and without rules. But those laws and rules of Islam, they're like a fence that encloses a garden. And what really counts is not so much the fence, it's very important, but what really counts is the garden. And the house, the beautiful house in that garden, and that's your heart. So bring your heart to life. All action comes out of the heart. Uh, renew your covenant with God. Renew your love with the Prophet Wasallam, And uh, renew your um, acts of obedience and goodness and avoid all wrong. And don't count the days, but make the days count. God bless you all. Pray for me, pray for us all, pray for our ummah, our wonderful communities in the United States and in Canada and in Mexico and in Europe and throughout the world. God bless you all and give you a beautiful Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem.